Then Judas Maccabeus, and they that were with him, went privily into the towns, and called their kinsfolk together, and took unto them all such as comfort continued in the Jews' religion, and assembled about six thousand men. And they called upon the Lord, that he would look upon the people that was trodden down of all, and also pity the temple profane of ungodly men, that he would have compassion upon the city, sore defaced, and ready to be made even with the ground, and hear the blood that cried unto him, and remember the wicked slaughter of harmless infants, and the blasphemies com committed against his name, and that he would shew his hatred against the wicked. Now when Maccabeus had his company about him, he could not be withstood by the heathen, for the wrath of the Lord was turned into mercy. Therefore he came at unawares, and burnt up towns and cities, and got into his hands the most commodious places, and overcame and put to flight no small number of his enemies, but specially took he advantage of the night for such privy attempts, insomuch that the fruit of his holiness was spread everywhere. So when Philip saw that this man increased by little and little, and that things prospered with him still more and more, he wrote unto Ptolemaeus, the governor of Celesyria and Phoenicia, to yield more aid to the king's affairs. Then forthwith, choosing Nicanor, the son of Patroclus, one of his special friends, he sent him with no fewer than the twenty thousand of all nations under him to root out the whole generation of the Jews. And with him he joined also Gorgias, a captain, who in matters of war had great experience. So Nicanor undertook to make so much money of the captive Jews as should defray the tribute of two thousand talents, which the king was to pay to the Romans. Wherefore, immediately, he sent to the cities upon the sea coast, proclaiming a sale of, captive, of the captive Jews, and promising that they should have four score and ten bodies for one talent, and not expecting the vengeance that was to follow upon him from the Almighty God. Now when word was brought unto Judas of Nicanor's coming, and he had imparted unto those that were with him, that the army was at hand. They that were fearful and distrusted the justice of God fled and conveyed themselves away. Others sold all, all that they had left and withal besought the Lord to deliver them, sold by the wicked Nicanor, before they met together. And if not for their own sakes, yet for the covenants he had made with their fathers and for his holy and glorious name's sake, by which they were called. So Maccabeus called his men together under the number of 6,000 and exhorted them to be stricken with terror of the enemy, not to fear the great multitude of the heathen who came wrongly against them, but fight manfully, and to set before their eyes the injury that they had unjustly done to the holy place, and the cruel handling of the city, whereof they made a mockery, and also the taking away of the government of their forefathers. For they, said he, for they, said he, trust in their weapons and boldness, but our confidence is in the Almighty, who at a beck can cast down both them that come against us and also the world. Moreover, he recounted unto them what helps their father, forefathers had found and how they were delivered when under Sennacherib an hundred fourscore and five thousand perished. And he told them of the battle that they had in Babylon with the Galatians, how they came but eight thousand in all to the business with four thousand Macedonians that the Macedonians being perplexed, the 8,000 destroyed an 120,000 because of the help that they had from heaven, and so received a great booty. Thus when he had made them bold with these words, and ready to die for the law in the country, he divided his army into four parts, and joined with himself his own brethren, leaders of each band, to wit Simon and Joseph and Jonathan, giving each one 1,500 men, also, he appointed Eleazar to read the holy book. When he had given them this watchword, the help of God, himself leading the first band, and by the help of all my, my, the Almighty, they slew above 9,000 of their enemies and wounded and maimed the most part of Nicanor's host, and so put all to flight, and took their money that came to buy them, and pursued them far, but lacking time, they returned. For it was the day before the Sabbath, and therefore they would no longer pursue them. So when they had gathered their armor together and spoiled their enemies, they occupied themselves about the Sabbath, yielding exceeding praise and thanks to the Lord 
who had preserved them unto that day, which was the beginning of misty, the beginning of mercy distilling upon them. And after the Sabbath, when they had given part of the spoils to the maimed and the widows and orphans, the residue they divided among themselves and their servants. When this was done, and they had made a common supplication, they besought the merciful Lord to be reconciled with his servants forever. Moreover, of those that were with, with Timotheus and Bacchides, who fought against them, they slew about they slew above twenty thousand, and very easily got high in strongholds, and divided among themselves many spoils more, and made this, the maimed orphans, widows, yea, and the aged also, equal in spoils with themselves. And when they had gathered their armor together, they laid them up all carefully in con convenient places, and the remnant of the spoils they brought to Jerusalem. They slew also Philarchus, that wicked person who was with Timotheus, who had annoyed the Jews many ways. Furthermore, at such time as they kept the feast for the victory in their country, they burnt Calistines that had set fire upon the holy gates, <clears throat> who had fled into a little house. And so he received a reward meet for his wickedness. As for that most ungracious Nicanor, who had brought a thousand merchants to buy the Jews, he was through the, he was, through the help of the Lord, brought down by them of whom he made least account, and putting off his glorious apparel, and discharging his company, he came like a fugitive servant through the midland unto Antioch, having very great dishonor, for that his host was destroyed. Thus he that took upon him to make good to the Romans their tribute by means of captives in Jerusalem told abroad that the Jews had gone to fight for them, and therefore they could not be hurt because they followed the laws that he gave them.